G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Uh, it has been a little while in between drinks, haven't haven't sat down to record a video in like six weeks, other than the podcast, but to sit here in this chair and, and actually record a video, it's it's been a little while in between drinks, so apologies for the, uh, the absenteeism. Uh, to be honest with you, I've kind of just been assessing, you know, whether I want to do this anymore, whether I still believe in the channel, and um, I kind of hit a point where I was like, I've been building towards, you know, trying to make this a career for four years or whatever it is, nearly five. And I sort of have a realization lately, you know, do, do I actually want to make this a career? And lately the answer's probably been no, to be honest with you. And what I soon realized after that was, if I don't have this overarching goal, I, I kind of need to operate with a, a carrot in front of me. So once I realized it's probably not my eventual career path, um, the desire to make videos week to week kind of dropped off as well and started to question whether I enjoy, you know, doing this as often as I do and working myself into the ground. I won't bang on about that too much. I don't want to bore you with my identity crisis, but that is a, a short and sweet explanation as to why I haven't been doing videos. But today, I kind of just felt like doing one. It's been a while since I've done a power rankings, like a good 10 weeks ago. A fair bit of water has gone under the bridge in terms of the season, uh, so I thought this would be a good video to get back into it. Kind of a snapshot as, as to how I see the competition and, and how I rank them. I've still been doing videos for Drewsy's channel. I uh, didn't want to leave him hanging, so I still I still do the Drew Footy Show. Um, he uploads it on a Tuesday, so if you wanted to see my face, it, it's there as well. But today, got to go through the 18 teams, top to bottom, uh, in the order that I rank them, and it's a kind of a combination on form, but also the threat to you know the premiership, at least in my estimation. So that's how I rank them. So I'll, I'll spare you the uh, sponsorship sort of intro this week. I uh, I think they still sponsor me, uh, and we're just going to get into the rankings, guys. So uh, from top to bottom, this is how I rank the 18 teams right now. So we'll start off with the Melbourne Footy Club for me. Uh, you know, reasserted themselves as the premiership favourite this year. And, and to be honest, if I did this, you know, before their big win over the Lions, uh, I probably still would have had Melbourne first because I just think their top end football um, it, it's unmatched. I don't think any of the other contenders have that top level football in them. Could they beat them in September? Yeah, absolutely they could. But after stuttering hard, after starting 10-0 uh, and then losing three in a row, they uh, they come back strongly with a big win over the Lions, who you may see as the you know the second best team in the comp, depending on your viewpoint. Despite losing three in a row to the Pies, Swans, and Frio, who are all good teams, uh, they've beaten the Lions and North in their last five as well. And yeah, sit on top of the ladder, best team in the comp, reigning premiers, easy decision. Now in second spot, I'm going to differ from the current AFL ladder. I don't think Geelong is the second best side in the competition. You might disagree with that, uh, but I think I'm still going to go with Fremantle. I think there's an absence of a clear choice here. It's probably three or four teams jostling for this position but I think over the stretch Fremantle uh, has proven itself to um, to beat you know some really good teams and uh, admittedly falter against I think the Gold Coast and the Pies uh, not too long ago but while it's been a mixed bag of fixtures I've won three out of the last five um, there's been some tough fixtures in that as well and they you know lost to Carlton on the weekend but I think for the fact that they've beaten the Demons in Melbourne and uh, then they beat the Lions the week after that I think I think they the brand that they play stacks up and I, I think come finals Fremantle at the moment are the second best team in the competition. Third I've got Brisbane who just get overtaken um, from by Fremantle here probably because they lost to them not only that but they proved themselves 11 goals off the best team in the comp as well so the Lions they're this good consistent side but when it comes to playing the best teams um, they haven't quite shown the you know their best football this year it's fair to say in the last five they lost to the Demons Fremantle and then had an average loss against Hawthorne in Tasmania and then uh, in that time they've also beaten the Saints and the Giants who you'd expect them to beat. So they don't dip too far. In fact, third is where they sit on the ladder anyway. They're the third best team in the comp. In fourth spot, I've got Geelong. Um, and this probably is more about gut feel than anything. I just I just don't think they're better than Fremantle and Geelong. And obviously, they lost to Fremantle at GMHBA2, which is a factor in this. But they have won all their last five. They had an impressive win over the Tigers. Uh, I mean, they did get like, what, six goals in front and nearly lose. But still, Richmond are a tough opponent. In that time, they've also beaten the Dogs the power, uh, and then beaten West Coast and Adelaide, who you'd expect them to beat as well. So I think they're tracking along solidly uh, without looking like a massive contender. I still have doubts over, you know, how can they compare against Melbourne in particular in finals. They've probably got the biggest doubt on them 
um, out of that top four, perhaps for me anyway, other than maybe Brisbane, but Brisbane's been more consistent. I, I just personally think they're a bit less of a threat as it stands than Fremantle and Brisbane. Then outside the top four, you've got Carlton, and this is where they sit on the ladder as well in fifth. Um, another team who's had a mixed bag of results in the last five. They've had you know a good win against Fremantle. That was a great demonstration of their ability, and it was good to see them show, um, you know, I guess some consistency a little bit. You know, they've been up and down this year. They've beaten Essendon, and they also beat Sydney, another team sort of not outside the realm of possibility for finishing top four. In that time, though, they've lost to some top eight sides in Collingwood and, I say, Richmond, who currently sit ninth, but I think are finals quality. So mixed bag of results to some extent, but I think the top brand that Carlton has demonstrated this year shows that they're clearly above, you know, sixth and below. Then in sixth spot, you've got the Swans, who have won three of their last five with wins over Richmond narrowly in Sydney. They beat the Demons at the MCG, which is a great win, and they annihilated St Kilda, another side that sort of ranked around them, at least on the ladder, going into this game. Uh, in that time, they've had some disappointing results against the Power, who uh, Adelaide Oval can be tough to beat, and yeah, lost to the Blues as well in Melbourne. So yeah, demonstrated they can beat some good teams, particularly uh, Melbourne in Melbourne and Richmond, um, and their losses aren't too horrible as well. So I think they're around the mark and contending for top four without having the consistency of those top four sides. Then you've got in seventh spot, Collingwood, who are arguably the form side of the competition right now, up there with DeLong, having won five of their last five, and in that patch includes some really impressive wins uh, over the Demons, that was a good win uh, on the Queen's birthday match. They beat Fremantle in Perth, which is a tough ass. Fremantle have been, you know, bloody good this year, and they beat their arch rivals in Carlton at the G as well. There's some other wins over struggling sides in Hawthorne and GWS, and you know both sides took it up to them. But on their day, they can be capable. So I'm loving what Collingwood's produced this year. Completely got the prediction on them wrong this year. They're looking every bit a final side. They're list demographic strong, and I think they're poised to be a good team for a number of years. They just you know got to knuckle down on that consistency. In eighth spot, we have Richmond, and I think we've seen a little bit of a resurgence from the Tigers as the season has wore on. They've won three of their last five, and their two losses were thrillers against Geelong and Sydney, who are obviously very tough teams, teams that I've ranked ahead of them in this ranking. They've beaten Essendon and Port, as you'd expect, and uh, I think beating Carlton showed the growth that Richmond's had over the course of the year. It also kind of speaks to Carlton's inconsistency, but I think Richmond's emerged as uh, certainly a finals quality side, and even though they sit ninth on the ladder right now, I expect them to play finals. Then you've got the Western Bulldogs in ninth spot for me. I think they're building momentum quite nicely. It's been an up and down year. Some really, really good results where they've punished teams and then some results that really make you question how they made a grand final last year. But they've won four of their last five with just the one loss to Geelong who have been in some great form themselves. They've smashed West Coast by 101 in Perth, uh, as hard as that is to do, and a 20 point win over Hawthorne today as well. And they had some closer wins over the Suns and the Giants. So nothing to really write home about, but they're banking wins at the moment and putting themselves within touching distance of the finals. Then in 10th, I've got St Kilda, and this is a tough one. 10th, uh, I don't know if it's a fair reflection of how good they've been this year, but I think they sit around that on the ladder anyway. I think it really speaks to how even the top eight race is. And I was saying on the Drew Footy Show, the top 12 this, this year is probably on par with the top seven or eight last year. I think it's just a deeper finals race and that's why St Kilda currently sits 10th and it's mostly on their form. Their last three has been really disappointing. They've had three losses in a row to Sydney, Lions and Essendon in particular. That is a disappointing result and uh, pretty uncompetitive against the Swans in Sydney too. The two most recent wins were also North and Adelaide so hard to take too much from that but the last couple of losses they've had have been so disappointing that it's hard for me to retain them in that top eight ranking. So definitely a finals contender but right now on form, they drop for me. Then in 11th, you've got Port Adelaide off the back of a two-point win today over the Gold Coast Suns. We've seen some improved form. Not that that was hard. After the first five rounds, they were 0-5. I think I had them at 17th the last time I did this video. Um, but they've had some wins over the Suns, Swans, and Essendon in the last five. In particular, that win over the Swans shows there's a bit of fight about Port Adelaide at the moment. In that last five as well, they've had two respectable losses against Geelong and Richmond. And they edged the Suns for me because, A, they just beat them. Um, but also then I kind of also consider, you know, how good we know the team is from last year and Port Adelaide probably slightly trust them a little bit more than the Suns at the moment whether or not I'm right on that it's just kind of the way I feel. In 12th spot I have the Gold Coast Suns and this feels harsh putting them at 12th because you know last year they probably would have finished 8th on current form uh, and they currently sit around that 12 ranking for me. Uh, they've had a really good run of 5 winning 3 of those 5 games and their only 2 losses were 2 close losses against the Dogs and Port Adelaide two sides that uh, obviously featured heavily in last year's finals. They smashed all of Adelaide 
Hawthorne and North. And to me, that really demonstrates how far they've come and how much better than the bottom sides they are. So unfortunately, just sort of at the bottom end of that finals race, but still well and truly in it. And this for me is where the gap in the competition is. I think Gold Coast are finals worthy and the teams from now below, uh, not really in the hunt at all. So we'll start with Adelaide. Again, a rebuilding side. I think they're tracking okay. I was very positive on them in the most recent podcast that we did. Uh, in the last five, they've had losses to Geelong, St Kilda, and Gold Coast, who are all you know pretty solid teams this year to varying extents. They had a big win over North Melbourne and a five-goal win over the West Coast Eagles as well. So I don't know how much we've learned over Adelaide. They're going all right. For me, clearly below the finalists, but probably the best of the teams that won't make it. Then I've got GWS in 14th, and um, this is a tough one. I think we've seen some genuine improvement over the last five since they uh, they got rid of Leon Cameron, replaced him with Mark McVeigh, and I just think they're playing a little bit better, to be honest. And they've only won two of their last five. Um, their two wins were big wins over the bottom two in West Coast and North Melbourne, and they've had some gallant defeats against the Lions, Dogs, and uh, most recently Collingwood. So I think there is, there's a bit more spark about them now, uh, and that's why I have them ahead of Hawthorne, who we'll talk about now. I've got the Hawks 15th, um, and you know they had a really good win over Brisbane in Tasmania about four weeks ago, and have been relatively disappointing since. And I say disappointing because I think their best football has been very, very good this year. We talk about that on the Drew Footy Show as well. Uh, but you know the stats would suggest they're a bottom four side at the moment. They had a huge loss to the Gold Coast Suns, which isn't really a good demonstration of how good Hawthorne can be, which is why I think it's really disappointing. Then they had a really good effort against Fremantle in Perth and uh, and Collingwood, two of the better form sides of the competition right now, and then a 20-point loss to the Dogs. They're certainly capable of finishing higher than what they currently are. I think it's just a product of the fact that they're, the, the gap between their best and their worst is pretty stark at the moment, but it's pretty understandable for a rebuilding side. So I think long-term, no issues, no concerns over Hawthorne. It's just a year where it's going to be frustrating. Then we're into the bottom three, and uh, there's a clear bottom three in my opinion. Essendon is the top of that bottom three. They've lost four of their last five, and in that time had one really good result, uh, beating St Kilda, who are admittedly out of form. It was still a big difference or a big upgrade from the form Essendon had previously shown. They had some competitive losses against Richmond, Port Adelaide, and Carlton, and the most recent game they played was a game in Perth where they lost to uh, 17th spot West Coast but I will say I think I think the Eagles have turned a corner personally I thought it was a fairly okay game didn't really look clearly like it was 16th versus 17th so I'm actually heaping shit on Essendon for that result uh, they got West Coast at a bad time if they played four weeks ago Essendon would have won comfortably so we'll move on now to the bottom two uh, and it's still a clear bottom two in my opinion West Coast is 17th I think they've emerged as clearly better than North Melbourne which wasn't true two weeks ago uh, and they've obviously been terrible for most of this year I just think we've seen a real improvement since the last three games against Adelaide. I think it was probably the second or third quarter. I, uh, I made a comment, you know, as soon as we got within touching distance, kicked a couple of goals in a row, the, the mental side of the game just changed for West Coast. They started to think they could win and the confidence just went through the roof. They took that confidence into Geelong and put up a very, very good effort in a three goal loss and then uh, obviously got the chocolates against Essendon last week. So they haven't overcome the shitness of this year enough for me to put them above Essendon. They're still clearly 17th, but what they have done in the last three weeks as emerges clearly better than North right now. And then finally, we've got 18th North Melbourne, um, and this is completely uncontroversial. I would say they've lost all of their last five games, uh, and that's as far as I went back in this analysis, And but the average of that is about eight to 10 goals in each game, and four of those teams that they lost to weren't even currently inside the top eight, I don't think. So again, it's, it's a really disappointing year from North Melbourne. They're capable of more. The 22 they put out is obviously still not a great, strong a strong side there's a lot of youth in there but they're still kind of doing themselves a disservice i think they're capable of more so the, the time will come where they they do a west coast and they improve and they improve a bit and they'll they'll nab a win this year but at the moment they are so far off the rest of the competition that they are a clear 18th so there you have it guys that is my uh pretty quick and cheerful uh ranking of the 18 teams let me know in the comments uh what you agree with and what you disagree with i don't think this was um simple i think the last time i did a rankings video for the first time in a while, there was a bit of a consensus that thought I got it fairly accurate. Maybe not perfect, but uh, but fairly accurate. And I think this one might be a little bit tougher. I think there'll be a bit more disagreement, um, maybe uh, particularly around that top four. But let me know in the comments what you think. I do have it in my head that I want to do some more videos soon. So um, I'll stop short of promising it because I don't know, but um, I'd like to. So hopefully you will see this mug again on the channel in the not too distant future. Thanks for sticking fat with the channel guys and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.